Hey guys, I'm at the airport today working on my plane and I thought I would make a short video um, called The Good, The Bad and The Ugly about our Zenith airplanes. And when I say our Zenith airplanes, I mean the, the 200s, the 300s, the 250s, right? And uh, of course, the almost forgotten, the CH100, which is a fascinating airplane to me. I don't have any experience with it, but uh, or I've never seen one actually, but Anyways, I have a list that I made called the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I would just, I'm just gonna read off my list what I think. What's good about these airplanes? Uh, the first thing would be the acquisition uh, price, right? They are comparatively to other two, two seat airplanes. They are uh, inexpensive for what you're getting, and you know the performance you're getting out of out of them, right? Because you're, you know, you're getting a performance that supersedes even in 172 um, but you're paying way lower price than a 150 right the flying characteristics it's a very simple airplane to fly it's steady it just flies it just wants to fly straight and level uh, the visibility even though it's a low-wing airplane it is absolutely phenomenal i have most people that I have ever taken up, including myself going to first flight, I was just blown away how well you can see from a lowing airplane. And this is this one is is that example that you will not be disappointed with, with the visibility out of this thing uh, being a low wing. And because most people are like, well, I want a high wing. I want to see the ground. You, you will see the ground really well from this airplane. Uh, and the wings are kind of short. So if you need to something even more closer, you can simply put in a bank and, and see it. Most airplanes, if they're built to plans, will have a center stick. Uh, this, is, this is one of the funniest points of contention between the people that fly these airplanes and the people who either bought them just now or are thinking of buying them, uh, the, the center control stick. Oops, wrong way. Right, it just got one stick. But you also see what it has? It has dual throttles. See the throttle? It's a little knobby here. There's two of them, right? There's one here and one on the far side, right? So that is a huge plus, especially if you're trying to get flight training and conversion training or whatever you want to do. Both of pilots have access to the center stick, which is easy. And both pilots have access to a throttle. Uh, if this has been built according to plans, and I know over the years there has there has been changes. Uh, there is a dual stick option. Some people have that; they prefer that. I have not even tried sitting in a dual stick uh, CH two three hundred. Uh, I haven't had one around to to try it out, but I would never ever uh, modify going away from the center stick. It's it is absolutely a fantastic idea for for this airplane because, well. I'll mention in the bad side that they're not very big. Uh, so they're easy for flight training. Uh, the plants were always built with uh, dual rudder pedals. So again, that, that was I think that was part of the, the idea is that a lot of builders will be getting flight training on them. So they were automatically, if they were built to plant, they'll have the center stake, the dual throttle, and dual, dual rudder pedals. Um, it, a, another uh, positive thing that again if they were built to plans they might have a center pull handle for brakes so they won't have toe brakes but they'll have a handle you would pull and that's usually is located underneath the dash and uh, behind the stick so when you land you can pull on it you know you don't need to hold on to the control stick and you will have brakes applied equally uh, and again, that was because it's it's less expensive that way, but it, it gives you again access for both pilots, left or right side, to have equal access to the stick, the throttle, the, the brake. So that is a nice thing. Um, <clears throat> another nice thing about these airplanes is they have a wide variety of cho uh, choices for engines. The CH200 can go uh, according to the plans for as low as 85 horse and as much as 160. I guess the 185 would be like at the very bottom of performance. 
but uh, the CH200 did come with only a center single tank that's located behind the pilot seat. So it's not a very big tank and having uh, 85 or 90 horsepower engine would be a very nice, you know, perform, perform, not, ad sure, sorry, the adequate performance for, uh, for, for flying in one. And a CH300, the minimum horse is 125 to 160. <clears throat> As the book states, you could go as low as 115, but that would be uh, pretty poor performance. And I would have to agree the CH300 is uh, heavy enough that, you know, putting like a small O235, you wouldn't get much out of it to be a single seat plus, right? Like you wouldn't get much performance out of it. Um, and the structural limit on the CH300 is 180 horse. So you could put in 180 horse if... You want to have one on floats uh, i know several people have put them on floats and uh, apparently they are a nice float plane i don't fly floats so i know nothing about that uh, on a good side is that you could find these airplanes kicking around airports you could just pick one up that you know it's kind of abandoned and maybe nobody wants it so if you're looking for projects to pick up you know an expensive put some work into it they are simple to rebuild their simple simple made right i mean they were designed in the 70s and the 60s and uh, so they were meant to be built by the average person with the average knowledge at home so there's there's nothing complicated about them right believe it or not i still have come across unfinished projects that people have abandoned given up sold resold maybe even as you know probably passed away yet some of them by now and I have last year there was probably three or four unfinished projects that were available that I found fairly locally here on like on, on marketplace or Kijiji so you could you could even go do that uh, there's a very strong support group online I I I'm part of the people that run the Facebook page and there's even a better group that's run by um, someone from from england and uh he has other support uh that and that's i that's a really big good resource group because i think it's much it is much bigger than what, what's on facebook right now but uh so the the good online presence for this type of airplane is is, is available and uh as far as i can tell this airplane has a very very good safety record uh there isn't I've looked into um, accidents on these airplanes. And as far as I could find, there was only like one or two that were fatal. And I, neither of the two accidents that I could tell were because of the airplane. It was pilot error. Anyways, uh, my heater is starting to turn on. So I will come back and finish this long thought uh, after the heat's done running. All right, heat's done running, so I can continue my monotonous uh, uh, spiel. So now let's move on to the, the bad side of, of, of our great airplanes, because they're obviously, you know, nothing's perfect. It's not an RV, so it's it's not perfect. The bad. I would say the, the, the biggest, weirdest sticking point about this airplane is that there is a resale ceiling value. These airplanes have cost the same for the last 25 years. Why? I don't know. I, I don't have an answer. They've always been under the value, but lately, you know, we're talking, we're, you know, 2024. So we're past pandemic when, when everything started being gouged except for these airplanes. Why? I, I don't have an answer. So if you're, if you're, if you're going to be buying one of these, and you know you think oh okay i'll you know i'll put in a brand new engine and i'll put in a brand new panel uh, you're probably just gonna have to live with it for for years and years you you'll it's it's like i said it's not like an rv where you're most likely going to get your money out or you know some extra it is what it is it's just i guess there's just not enough of them and most people don't understand how how good these airplanes are for for the you know for the for the performance and, and what you're what you're putting into it uh another downside another bad thing about this airplane is it is a cramped interior 
Uh, I'm not a big person. Well, too many tacos maybe, but you know, I'm not tall. I'm you know your average height person. I and uh, in the winter, you know, with winter coats, it gets cramped. It, honestly, that it's 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 the weirdest thing. Like doing the first flight in spring without jackets, like holy, you know, you think that the the, the airplane's gotten wider by several inches. Uh, so it is, you know, the, the interior does feel cramped. Uh, the the maximum cru cru maximum flying speed or cruising speed, I would say even if you put in a bigger, you know, if you th throw in that 100 e horse, I don't think you're gonna go more than 150 miles an hour. Right? This this, you know, I I wouldn't settle like I see a lot of times owners online are settling saying, oh, 110, ooh, I'm doing 120, it's fantastic. Uh, uh, no, no, they, they, they should be faster than that. You know, you should be looking at 130 to 145. But I think over that, you're not really going to go more than 150 miles an hour, right? No, no matter what you put on it. So that's, you know, that that's a downside. Another funny downside about this airplane, I would say, is getting, getting rid of drafts. For some reason, the way this is designed, the way you get drafts going into the cockpit, especially through the wing root and... Everybody complains about drafts, right? The sliding canopy, right? It's 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 all wide open, right? Like wind can come in any anywhere in here, and uh, with the flying, you you kind of have to be in a jacket, right? Because you will be getting draft. You're gonna be getting hit with that, you know, ultra cold air, you know, coming in at you. So I'll put that as a, a negative. Uh, people complain about uh, the landing gear design. I have to say that. Yeah, it's it's not the best landing gear design, right? My mine, the nose gear is a Cessna gear, so that was modified from the original Zenith gear. I have flown a CH three hundred with with original Zenith uh, gear. I we had one for I had one for eleven years, and uh, I, there was no issue. It, it just flew like a normal airplane. You don't think about it. Uh, but the one I had had a self locking. Uh, gear so you don't have to lock it so in the in the design the plans in these airplanes you have to there's a lever you pull to lock the gear and so it's aligned center actually the one oh no that one has this so the one above me has a Cessna gear too so I can't even demonstrate it uh, the way Chris Hines designed the landing gear is that the nose gear is the is the same identical build as the right landing gear it's 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 a you so you build two right gears and use one for the for the nose gear so so that way if you look at the plans and look at the pictures it looks like the gear sits off off center and if you have wheel pens on it can turn and become um, stuck sideways um, but i have flown a ch300 last year that i had to lock the landing gear before takeoff and literally you just line up on the runway you pull a little lever you lock it like it's like it's not a big deal uh, is it a smart design it was for the time when it was built right so you also have to take into account that these like I said the, the, the year that they were designed it's a different era you know this is decades old it was meant to be simple made to be quick right it was there was no mass production of parts like the way it is now uh, so take it for what it is right just just be aware of that uh, another downside to, to, to our Zenith is there is no more support from Zenith themselves. Uh, Chris has passed away and uh, his sons are running the current Zenith aircraft companies, one in still in Midland, Ontario, and one in Missouri, Mexico, Missouri. Uh, they, you know, appreciate what their father has done. But, you know, you can't call up Zenith and say, I have questions about plans and then they'll be like yeah, sorry we, it's just they don't provide support i know for many years they used to sell the plans if someone wanted but i'm i've asked a year or two ago at one of the open houses and they said yeah they don't even sell plans because when they sell plans people call back and they have questions and they just don't have the resources to be dealing with something that is this old and they have no intentions of manufacturing anything for them or, or you know dedicating time to to help customers right so 
so they would you know they don't want to do that then you know that makes sense they, you know why would they sell plans that they can't provide support for right so the only support you're going to have is the online support which is either the io group or the facebook group right so and then of course you know you're you're getting advice from internet people right like someone like me like what we do you know i know so much about a zenith because i have one for for, for i don't know how many years now quite a few i guess right so so you, you, you take it for you know what it's worth <clears throat> and uh so one thing so there's no parts available there because the like the, the zenith factory before they went to the 701 the 601 they used to sell parts for these planes there was some minor part kits like you could buy ribs and and other other parts I, I i don't know to be honest what was available i know there was some parts available uh, but a lot of these airplanes like mine this this yellow one uh it was all scratch built from plants right so any if there's any damage to this airplane anything it's just it has to be rebuilt from the damaged part because there's no parts right so um i'll talk about my airplane in another video uh so there's no plants available so if you found someone selling a kit unfinished kit or someone selling you an airplane that they've bought or they had in the hangar and they're you know or you found it sitting sort of you know wasting away in a tie down and you're buying the plane and they don't have a set of plans to go with that plane just be aware you can't call zenith and say can i buy a set of plans i'm not going to bother you i just want to rebuild this old plane there is no plans right so you would have to i don't know I don't know where you're going to find plants, right? I'm not going to say anything on the video, but <laughs> there's only one way to, to get plants, right? Oops, where's this going? Right, you got to, yeah, there's no plants unless they come with, with, with a plane you purchased or the unfinished kit you purchased, right? Um, and uh, another downside is that there's not that many of them around, right? So I'm at an airport here where I think there's eight, 10 12 between 200 250 300 which is probably the most dense you know uh, gathering of of these airplanes on one airport it really is right so i might fly somewhere and and i know that oh there's someone with this unit but other than that you know especially in the u.s like there's you might be by yourself with a zenith ch something you know for for hundred miles right it's you know they're they're they are rare right for 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 a world scale they are rare right uh well another bad thing i guess which i kind of started with was one of the good things is that they can be found abandoned at the airports right so it's like if if you're looking to buy one you're like woo, you know cheap airplane but at the same time you know when was the last time you were at an airport at least here in, in Canada, I, you know, the airports that I visit, I've never seen an abandoned rotting away an RV, any RV, right? But I have seen Zenith and it's, I find it weird. I, I don't know why these poor things are sort of mistreated at the end of their life and there really should not be the end of life because they are well put together airplanes. Uh, okay, I guess that kind of concludes my my list of the bad and in i guess chapter three i have the ugly we'll see in chapter three so now i guess i'll call this chapter three the ugly but other than anyways <laughs> we're talking about airplanes not myself uh i know mine's sort of painted yellow and it's not that old paint so maybe it doesn't look that ugly uh, but i don't think you see one ch 300 200 or 250 on a ramp and and you really don't look at them and go oh wow that's a good looking airplane that's you know that's a fast looking airplane right if you know i guess you know to say something for on the topic they are really not that pretty for what you know modern airplanes 
episodes that were designed a little bit later are like, you know, just you look at them and go, oh, that's a fast looking airplane, you know, sitting on the ramp, right? Uh, another downside or the ugly side of, of these airplanes is that they are cheap to buy. They are purchased by owners like myself who are on a tight budget because that's all I can afford and because it was you know easier to purchase. They tend to get stuck being like that for years and years. So you'll see a lot of them, you know, they're flying, they're, they're fine, they're mechanically sound, there's nothing wrong with them. And then you look in this, you know, you look inside the, the cockpit and you're like, oh, this hasn't been upgraded since 1985 or 82 or 79 when it started flying, right? So uh, what are you gonna do, right? It's, no, no one's gonna put in big, big box into an airplane, like I mentioned before, that has a, a ceiling on, on value right it's no one's gonna throw in huge money and go okay i'm gonna get my money out like maybe maybe now maybe i'm wrong right but you know as far as i can tell the the price of these airplanes yeah it's not you know fifteen thousand dollars i don't think you can buy a flying one for, for, for that but maybe i'm wrong right I, I don't know what's available but at the same time i don't think you're getting a hundred thousand for for a ch300 so I think that's kind of, I know, you know, like the downside or the ugly side of them is, is the lack of support for, from Zenith themselves, right? And I've, I've talked about, I've touched on, talked about this before. You know, Zenith is, you know, it's a big company for us looking from the outside, but I'm sure that looking from them, it, you know, they're still a family run business and they have so many employees and they can only dedicate so many, so much time answering questions about the planes that they have and not this little group of airplanes that, you know, we have and are, are trying to hold on to and fly. So I guess that concludes chapter three. So I don't ha really have anything else to say on the, on the ugly side of, of the Zenith. <laughs> okay, talk to you guys later. All right, I think I'm gonna conclude this, this video for today. I've, I've talked too much already as is. I didn't think the video is going to be as long and here I go. Yabbity, 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 yab. Hey, once again, uh, so in conclusion, I'm going to just say that I will always speak well about these airplanes. Are they the best? No. Are they the worst? Far from it, right? They, they are good, solid airplanes. They do a lot of good things, you know. I don't think you can get a better value for an airplane than, than and then the older CH series airplanes. So yeah, I'll, I'll try to make little short videos. There's a lot of people asking various questions. People have come across these airplanes for the first time. They have, you know, questions that come up sort of regularly. I'll, I'll go through some of the more frequent ones and I'll try to make short videos, much shorter, much less talking. And I'll just, you know, I'll just come out to my airplane and just point out the answer, uh, which would be much easier than typing lines and lines of answer. But, you know, just for now, if you guys could uh, subscribe, click like and, uh, you know, comment. And, you know, if you want to ask questions on, on these videos, then, you know, maybe they'll help too. I have some ideas where I want to go with this and uh, we'll see if it goes beyond this one video. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Take care.